Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about why lugging your engine is a bad idea. And by lugging your engine what I mean is putting your engine at a very high load, for example flooring it, when it's at a low engine RPM, such as about you know 1500 RPM. So let's say you're in 5th gear, 6th gear, something like that, you're only cruising at about 40 miles an hour and you floor it, this is going to lug your engine. And so uh, the reason, first of all, I want to get into some logic uh, that I actually heard from Car Talk, and I thought it made it quite a bit of sense. Um, and then I'm going to get into a study uh, done by Toyota and Denso talking about low speed pre-ignition, which is more prevalent for small turbocharged engines using higher boost. And so first off, uh, you know, putting it in a high gear and trying to accelerate is kind of counterintuitive because you're going to have less wheel torque as a result of the gearing disadvantage. So obviously it makes sense to downshift if you're trying to accelerate. You're putting your engine at a disadvantage because you're telling it to do more work than it can. And so by putting it on these higher gears, your engine has to work harder, uh, meaning it's going to be less efficient. And so if it's operating in a less efficient range, um, it's going to heat up more. Uh, because efficiency of course correlates with heat um, so you have more heat going into uh, the engine block itself rather than just into useful work so as you overwork that engine it overheats your temperatures inside your cylinders uh, heats up and then once you have higher temperatures inside your cylinders uh, you start to get unpredictable timing so you can get ping you can get knock if you have hot spots somewhere in there uh, which can mess up your timing and so this can cause uneven combustion uh, not only the timing but also the location uh, if a deposit somewhere in there causes combustion to occur um, and so if you have that uneven combustion that's occurring in different locations or at bad times that can of course damage your piston you can have piston slap let's say you have a pressure not where it's supposed to originate well that can force the piston up against the cylinder wall and so you can start to scrape up your cylinder walls and so over time you know that seal will kind of wear out and you'll burn all kinds of oil and you won't have as good of pressure so that's kind of the you know how will this cause damage in pretty much any engine um, and this kind of gets into more of small turbocharged engines low speed uh, pre-ignition and so what is low speed pre-ignition well this is when you have ignition occur before your spark um, at a low speed a low engine speed so a low engine rpm uh, with a high load so for example you're flooring it uh, and it's caused by an ignition source and it occurs before the spark so this means you can't use ignition timing to get rid of it and so what this can do is it can damage and crack your pistons uh, can damage your spark plugs things like that so it can cause pretty detrimental uh, impacts on your engine so what are the sources uh, for this low speed pre-ignition um, well it's come down to that the ignition source has to be combustible and large enough in order to cause it um, some of the possible sources are oil droplets uh, which could be introduced into your combustion chamber through the positive crankcase ventilation system uh, deposit peelings uh, from the cylinder walls and on top of the piston top uh, as well as oil dilution which can occur from blow by when you get gasoline mixing in with the oil uh, and then having that oil mist spray back up into the combustion chamber um, from the piston sides as they're coming up and getting some oil droplets in there uh, and those can heat up and cause this pre-ignition so i looked at this study which was done by toyota and denso and they kind of came up with you know the process of how this occurs um, inside the engine so we're going to go over that and as I mentioned, the ignition source, what they found out, it has to be combustible and it has to be large enough in order to cause this. So here we have a piston. Uh, we're kind of looking at a zoomed in view of this is the cylinder wall and this is our piston, which would be moving up and down. And so we've got deposits that have started to form uh, on the cylinder wall and on the piston uh, from wall wetting, you know, spraying in gasoline. Um, and so you've got these deposits uh, that form from oil mixtures and things like that, the contaminants that are introduced um, and they form on the piston tops. Now they can form fairly quickly uh, on the cylinder walls up at the top of the bore as well as that crevice where the piston meets with the cylinder um, and then they kind of form fairly slowly on top of the piston itself under uh, low engine RPM uh, high load operations or low load operations rather. So at low load operations you can have these deposits start to form up on the piston. Well eventually these deposits can peel off and float inside the combustion chamber. And so let's say we have our compression stroke here and it peels off. Uh, so we've got this uh, combustible item, this combustible deposit, which is floating in the chamber. We then have our power stroke. So it ignites this and you have a surface flame that's on this uh, deposit. And then of course, during your exhaust stroke, the deposit, it doesn't make it out the exhaust. So it remains in the chamber. Um, let's just say for this example, it, of course it could go out the exhaust and then you wouldn't have this problem. Uh, but we're assuming that it remains within the cylinder, uh, which isn't all that unlikely. 
And so the surface flame is extinguished now, uh, but it's still kind of glowing because there's some remaining oxygen uh, in that mixture, not all of it burnt completely. And so that oxygen is reacting with the deposit and keeping it glowing. Then you have your intake stroke, and of course you're bringing in all kinds of new oxygen. So it really starts to glow once it's got all that oxygen around it. You have your compression stroke and you've introduced that air and fuel mixture. And then as a result, this glowing deposit now ignites that air and fuel mixture before your spark fires and you have this uh, low speed pre-ignition. So what this looks like uh, as far as pressure is concerned is here we've got our cylinder pressure on the left and here we've got our crank angle zero in the center. That would be top dead center. And so a normal combustion, you'll have your pressure kind of spike up as you reach top dead center, your spark fires, and then you have that peak of pressure as that cylinder is moving down uh, and as that combustion occurs and expands out that air and fuel mixture which is now burning. With low speed pre-ignition, however, this of, of course occurs before the spark, and so you have this peak in pressure, and it's kind of this erratic pressure that occurs uh, much higher than normal, and so that can seriously damage your engine. So that's kind of what it looks like uh, from a pressure standpoint versus you know where your crank angle is at. And so one of the last things I want to get into here is how do you prevent this from happening? And the easiest scenario is to just not floor it when you're at low engine RPMs. So if you're at, you know, six gear at 40 miles an hour, downshift into fourth maybe, uh, or third if you need to accelerate, uh, fifth if you don't need to accelerate that hard, you know, things like that. But point is, you can downshift and it's very easy to prevent this. So they actually plotted in this uh, Toyota and Denso uh, study that they did, they plotted, um, they were introducing deposits into a chamber um, and seeing when pre-ignition would occur. And so what they plotted was the cylinder pressure uh, versus the RPM, the engine RPM, and where you would have pre-ignition. And so it, it's not that uh, pre-ignition can't occur at higher engine RPMs, it's just that it's far less likely. And that's what this graph that they figured out shows, uh, because as you get into the lower engine RPMs, it's a much lower pressure at which pre-ignition will occur. So anything above this line, pre-ignition would occur. Uh, anything below this line with that contaminant, of course, this has to be there. Um, if that's there, pre-ignition still wouldn't occur, even if there was uh, that deposit floating around in there. So at these lower pressures, uh, or higher pressures at a higher engine RPM, you can get away with having those deposits in there and not having pre-ignition and damaging your engine. Um, so another way of getting around it is to tune for a rich air fuel mixture. So if you were to have, uh, you know, this kind of scenario right here, but you used a richer air fuel mixture, what that does is during this exhaust stroke here, you're not going to have as much air remaining, oxygen remaining, uh, that wasn't burned in that air fuel mixture. And so that oxygen won't be able to react with this. So this will pretty much just go out completely. And then when you have the intake air come in, it won't be enough to restart that reaction. And so you won't have all of this occur. So you can use a rich air fuel mixture. That, however, could cause oil dilution um, and it can cause deposits to form. So it's not really the greatest solution. Uh, it's just kind of something that could fix it uh, for a very specific scenario. And then also I think an oil catch can would be a great uh, way to, to help prevent this. Um, for example, you're not gonna be introducing, so you won't have uh, oil droplets, as I mentioned. That was one of the things that they thought, you know, could be a source of it is oil droplets introduced from your PCV valve. And so oil catch can, of course, just prevents that uh, from occurring or helps to reduce it significantly. And it can also help to reduce deposits uh, from forming on your pistons. And so that's uh, another way of getting around it. So I hope you guys have learned something from this. Um, just know that you, know, you shouldn't be flooring it if you're in high gear. And here's kind of the logic behind all that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five things which you should never do in your turbocharged car. And as you can tell we are in my 2014 Subaru STI which has a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now the first thing I want to talk about is not running your car hard until you've let everything get up to operating temperature. 